starting in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Hi guys welcome to Geek Kahlo YouTube channel. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a custom Iron Man helmet. If you are curious how I actually voice control the Iron Man helmet, and how to make it talks back, then this is the part you are going to want to watch. Because it will answer all of your questions. So I recently have stumbled upon a Arduino program that give you the ability to talk with the Iron Man helmet. So I customized that program to do some commands just like in the Iron Man films. The link to the Arduino program and the Android app that I used is in the description. The easiest way to test this program is, to get an Arduino board, upload the program, attach a Bluetooth module, and attach a LED to the 50th output, then say lights. Jarvis, introduce yourself. Allow me to introduce myself. I am Jarvis. Jarvis stands for just a rather very intelligent system. I am a virtual artificial intelligence, and I'm here to assist you with a variety of tasks as best I can. I functions as my creator's assistant, running and taking care of all the internal systems and this Iron Man helmet. 24 hours a day. 7 days a week. Importing all preferences from home interface. Systems are now fully operational. In the next part one will show the all the voice controls, features and the components used to make this helmet works, and in the end of this video, I will show and explain all of the components inside of the face plate. Now don't think this is a model that just sit on a wooden stand. As you know the most iconic part of a helmet is actually being able to wear it. When I made this helmet I only took my head as an example as the size of the helmet. But later on I discovered that I was only one that could fit in the helmet. And I had no idea how to make it bigger. So I tried to add a mechanism that can be adjusted according who wear it. It was a problem because no cosplayer or YouTuber has ever done it. So finally I decided to cut the back part of the helmet, and add a hinge on the top part of the helmet. If you are an Iron Man fan you will know the most iconic part of the Iron Man helmet is the face plate. It has the ability to move up and down and chin part open up. If you looked closely into the video you will see that both face plate and the chin part opens up at the same times. The way I made this was by using a server motor to the face plate mechanism and attaching a nylon line to the chin part. You might think that I used a micro server to the faceplate mechanism, because most cosplay makers and YouTubers make the faceplate really lightweight. Because the only thing in the faceplate is some cardboards and two LEDs. 
But in my Iron Man face plate I have stuffed so much motors and electronics inside, it has become almost equal to 1.2 kilograms from the fulcrum of the servo. And the servo motor could not handle the weight. So to tackle this problem, I used a 6.6 kilogram servo motor. The name of the servo motor is in the description. Open it. Yes, sir. Night mode. Night mode on. Normal. Night mode off. Close this. Closing lens. If you've seen the Iron Man film you might see the difference in the eyes of Helmet. My original plan was to leave eyes just like that. But then realized that I cannot see anything from inside the helmet. So I decided to add feature that the normal Iron Man helmet doesn't have. I made the eye lights of the helmet up and down according to my control. So whenever I want to see outside I could make the eye lens go up. And then I had a feature to see in the dark by as you saw in the video calling it the night mode. Open display. Yes, sir. Start recording. Recording started. Stop recording. Recording stopped. Close display. Closing display. So after making the eye lens I wanted to add in another feature to the helmet. We might not have the 3D holographic technology that Iron Man has. But I improvised by using a pop-out lens camera. If you watched the video closely you would have seen a camera lens coming out from the helmet. Because I used a simple mechanism in order to conceal the camera lens when it is not in use. So after installing the camera, I wanted it to open, close, start recording and stop recording. So in order to do it I placed a servo motor above the camera, so it can gently push the buttons automatically when I am wearing the helmet. Activate instant kill. Activating instant kill. Deactivate instant kill. Deactivating instant kill. I'm also a Spider-Man fan. When I watched the Spider-Man Homecoming I saw a mode in Peter Parker's suit called Activate Instant Kill so I wanted to add this feature to Iron Man helmet. I soldered some red and white LEDs to the eyes. Which took about 2 hours because it was very complicated. Turn off. Goodbye sir. Jarvis, turn on. Hello, sir. I know this is not a feature of a normal Iron Man helmet, but I wanted it to have ability to come back to life every time I turn it on. So I added a motor inside of the neck part and attach it some flaps and the Iron Man helmet using simple mechanism. So to make this circuit, I used a Arduino Mega board, and I attached a Arduino motor driver on the back of the helmet. I used a Bluetooth module for receiving and transmitting massages. This project took about two servo motor and two DC motors. And remember that this helmet has about 42 moving mechanisms inside which is only controlled by four motors. The names of all the components are in the description. To make the helmet strong, I dipped the whole helmet in Xboxy resin, because when the cardboard is dipped in Xboxy resin become likes plastic. If you don't know how, I have put a link in description. So first I created the opening mechanism of the faceplate using a MG995 servo motor which can almost lift about 6.6 kilograms of weight because from the fulcrum the faceplate weigh about 1.2 kilograms. This servo motor can be purchased easily from any electric store. 
and I attach a wooden stick on the opposite side of the hand of the servo. So when the faceplate opens the chin part opens up too. And then I focus on creating the display mechanism which had control over the camera's buttons. I use a normal micro servo just where the camera buttons are. So when I give a command the camera can be turn on, turn off, start recording and stop recording. And I didn't want to ruin the camera by permanently attaching it to the faceplate. So I created a cardboard box and dipped it in Xboxy resin to make it strong. And to make the lens come out of the helmet, I use a simple mechanism using PVC pipe and a circular piece of cardboard. So to make the lens move up and down I remove the circuit from servo motor and make it rotate 360 and I use a simple mechanism using a radio antenna which can be moved in a straight line and the combine the two. If you haven't watched my first video click the video on the right.